Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm doing a detailed review of the new Signia IX hearing aids. Coming up. It's been a little over a year since the release of the Signia AX platform that introduced split processing with the dual processors inside of their hearing aids. Well, we now have a new platform of devices from Signia called the IX. IX, which stands for Integrated Experience, is Signia's latest attempt to help you hear better in a background noise situation by using multi-directional bilateral beamformers. Yes, that is a mouthful, but trust me, I will explain how that technology works. But before we get into this new feature, Feature of these Signia hearing aids, let's first cover some of the basics. On this new IX platform, we will see the Signia Pure Charge and Go IX, which is the rechargeable receiver and canal version of this hearing aid. The Signia Pure Charge and Go TIX, which is the version that has a telecoil, as well as the Silk Charge and Go IX. And yes, you heard me right. This is going to be a rechargeable, completely in the canal prescription hearing aid. I do expect Signia to come out with other models on this IX platform, but I don't know when those will come come out or if they'll ever come out. The devices that I use for this review are the Signia Pure Charge and Go TIX, which is their telecoil version. These will initially launch in three different technology levels. You have the top tier premium 7IX, the mid tier 5IX, and the bottom tier 3IX. I also do expect at some point that they are going to come out with a 2IX and a 1IX for individuals who do not have a lot of money to spend on hearing aids. Now I will say this, every single time that you go down in technology level, it takes features and customizations away Away from your hearing care professional when they're attempting to optimize the performance of those devices for you. So my recommendation is the same for everybody. You should be going with the highest level of technology you can reasonably afford. And if you cannot afford it, you should be dropping down to a technology level that you can afford. And then it's the job of your hearing care professional to maximize the performance of those devices for you. As far as how much these will end up costing you, it depends on a lot of different variables, mainly where you live, what technology level you go with, what services are included, in your hearing aid purchase and the quality of those services. This means that you could spend less than $1,000 for one of these hearing aids or more than $4,000 for one of these hearing aids. It just really depends on those variables. Just keep in mind that the best, most expensive hearing aids in the world will not matter unless your hearing care professional fits and programs them correctly following best practices. If this is your first time hearing about best practices, I highly recommend that you check out this video that I will link down in the description because it is the only way to ensure that you receive the maximum amount of benefit from your devices. If you would like an easy way to find a hearing care professional who follows these best practices, check out my website hearingup.com to find a Hearing Up Network member near you. Hearing Up members have been vetted and are committed to following comprehensive best practices when selecting, fitting, and programming your hearing aids, as well as providing you with long-term best practice follow-up care. If you end up liking what you hear about the Signia Pure Charge & Go IX hearing aids, going to a Hearing Up member can help you get the most out of them. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the key features of the new IX hearing aids that are very similar to the previous generation of AX devices. Let's start with how they look and feel. They basically look and feel very similar to the previous generation AX technology. When you take them out of the charger here for the charge and go version of these devices, they turn on automatically with their nice little startup jingle that I'm hearing right now. One thing I'm not a fan of is that they don't have an indicator light on them to let you know if you want to manually turn them off or manually turn them on, whether or not you're actually achieving that or not. But otherwise, they're very comfortable when you put them in your ears. I do like that they use a typical rubber dome, not those click domes that they had on the generation that was prior to the AX generation. They kept the just the standard rubber domes for these. I'm not a huge fan of the tulip domes that I'm wearing on them for this review, but it is what it is. This is what they look like as you're wearing them. Now keep in mind, these are the TAXs. So this means that they have a telecoil and these are very small devices for having a telecoil inside of them. Now, even though they're small, it does not mean that they don't pack a punch because you can fit a wide range of hearing losses with these hearing aids. Anything from a mild level loss all the way up to a profound level loss with a variety of different receiver sizes and strengths as well as custom ear molds and embedded receivers as well. The rechargeability is essentially the same as well. You have a variety of different chargers that you can use. In fact, these are the three different charger options that you have. You have the standard charger, the portable charger like I have for this 
Service Review and the dry and clean charger. But they all still use the galvanic charging. So you actually have charging contacts inside of the little wells here and it kind of magnetizes and pulls your hearing aid into place. It's very easy to put your hearing aid in and pull the hearing aid out. I do wish that this had a bigger well down here just in case it's just not that big of a well inside of there. So if you have to use a custom ear mold on the tips of these, that well is really small. So you might have to go with a different charger style to be able to accommodate that. Now, let me get back to the little charging contact. So let me first hold this up to the camera so you can get an idea of what we're looking at here. And then if you spin it around to the bottom, you can see that little gold plate right there. That is the charging contact that makes contact with the bottom of the charger inside of there. Now, these charge really well, but the problem is, is that you can build up some debris around that contact point, so you have to make sure that you keep it clean. If you don't keep it clean, it can interrupt the charging of these devices, and then you're gonna end up with dead hearing aids. Now, the reason that I like this galvanic charging is because it's allowed Signia to keep the hearing aid really small, but get you a ton of battery life. I mean, you can go darn near a day and a half of constant wear. In fact, the only hearing aids that I can think of that give you a longer battery life on a single charge is the Starkey Genesis AI REC hearing aids. They also have OVP 2.0, which is own voice processing, and this is the second version of this processing strategy by Signia. This allows them to reduce the amount of amplification given to your voice when you're speaking. Some people have a problem with how they sound. I, for one, am not one of those individuals. I actually personally don't like when it reduces the amplification given to my voice. I like to turn that particular feature off, but if you're the type of person who doesn't like the sound of your own voice, you can reduce it a bit, just keep in mind that most people actually adapt to the sound of their own voice very quickly within the first day or two of wearing their hearing aids. I will say though that this is a nice feature to have if you feel like you need it. The new iX platform also uses notch therapy. This is intended for individuals who have tinnitus. So if you have a lot of issues with your tinnitus and just wearing the hearing aids on their own by giving you back amplification, if that does not reduce your perception of your tinnitus, your hearing care professional can implement this notch therapy. And as long as they know what they're doing with it, they may be able to get your perception of tinnitus down even further. For those of you out there who have single-sided deafness, don't worry, these are going to be compatible with a cross transmitter. And I have to say, Signia does a really nice job with their cross transmission, with their hearing aids, and I do not expect that to change with this new iX platform. Now, for those of you who cannot make it into your hearing care professional's office, maybe you just had knee surgery or you can't get a ride to their office, you do have remote programming capabilities with these hearing aids. So you can actually have a remote programming session from the comfort of your own home as long as you have a smart device connected to these hearing aids. That being said, you cannot initially program them correctly unless you are in your hearing care professional's office because they can't do real ear measurement on you. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, a lot of Signia devices are sold direct to consumers online. And that's a huge problem because if you don't have real ear measurement performed on these hearing aids, you never get the full amount of benefit from them. Which is probably why I get so many complaints from Signia users who purchase their devices online instead of purchasing them from a hearing care professional in a clinic. So do yourself a favor, if you want the full benefit of the new Signia Charge & Go iX line of hearing aids, purchase them from a hearing care professional who follows best practices, which includes real ear measurement. If this is the first time you're hearing about real ear measurement, shocker, I have a video on that too. I will link that down in the description as well. To illustrate my point on the importance of having the Signia iX devices programmed using real ear measurement, this is data obtained from HearAdvisor, an independent hearing aid testing lab. When programmed to initial first fit settings without using real ear measurement, the Signia iX devices performed worse than the previous generation AX devices. So while the iX performed well, like AX, when professionally tuned using real ear measurement, the first fit settings actually earned the iX platform a worse overall sound score of 3.8 versus a 4.2 for the AX platform on an overall scale of 5.0. This caused the Signia iX hearing aids to fall short of the Hear Advisor Expert Choice Award. Moral of the story, if you do not get real ear measurement performed on your Signia iX hearing aids, they will perform 
perform worse than your older hearing aid technology. If you would like to learn more about the Hear Advisor sound score, head over to hearadvisor.com. When it comes to wireless connectivity using these hearing aids, the Signia Pure Charge and Go iX devices are technically still made for iPhone technology, which means that they interact really well with an Apple device. However, they still use the Asha Bluetooth protocol for connecting to Android devices, but if you've heard my other review videos, you know that I am not a fan whatsoever of the Asha Bluetooth protocol. Why, you may ask? Because it's so freaking glitchy. I mean, I had my Samsung phone that I initially connected these to. Now, doing the remote session to get them set up initially was actually fine, but then when I was trying to go into the app and adjust the different programs, the app wouldn't do anything. I literally could not switch between different programs. Thankfully, I have an Apple phone as well, an iPhone as well, which allowed me to connect with these devices and everything worked a lot more smoothly with my Apple device. The benefits of using Apple with these particular hearing aids also has to do with the hands-free ability to talk on the phone. So you don't even need to have your phone on you to be able to use these hearing aids, answer a call, talk to the person on the other end of the line because it picks up your voice and sends it to them and you still hear them directly in both of your ears. Or you can toggle this feature off, which is something that I really like as well, because if you go into a noisy environment, then you can toggle off that feature, still stream the audio into your ears, and then talk into your phone so they can hear you well. The Signia app has been updated and it works really well, except for on my Android phone. It does have the Signia Assistant, which apparently uses artificial intelligence with a live deep neural network, but I have to say, I'm not a super big fan of this feature. It's like working with like a really bad chat bot that you would encounter online and the changes that it makes, I can't even tell that it's doing anything. I think the concept is solid, but I think execution is off here. Now, one thing that I think that should be standard for made for iPhone hearing aids like the Signia Pure Charge and Go iX is compatibility with an Apple Watch. I want to be able to use my Apple Watch to make adjustments to my hearing aids, whether that's changing programs, whether that's enabling or disabling certain digital features, whether that's changing volume. I want to be able to do that with my watch, and at least as of right now, it is not compatible with the Apple Watch. However, some fantastic news is that these will be forward compatible with LE Audio. That means AuraCast, and it will require a firmware update. So we don't know when, we're gonna have AuraCast available to us, but when it comes out, apparently these are going to be forward compatible. You go into your hearing care professional's office, get a firmware update done, and bada bing, bada boom, you can now interact with AuraCast. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, Cliff, I have no idea what AuraCast is, you are missing out and you need to go check out this video. I feel like this is leading you to have to watch like 18 other videos, but it's really important if you wanna know the full extent of what you can do with these hearing aids. AuraCast is gonna revolutionize Bluetooth connectivity, Go check out that video when you're done watching this one. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what is new with this iX platform, and I'm hopefully going to earn my paycheck here because some of this stuff is a little bit more complicated to explain. Basically, all of the excitement surrounding this new iX platform has to do with their bilateral beam forming and their split processing that gives you three different front-facing microphone snapshots and one back and side-facing microphone snapshot that your hearing aids can process separately. And they call this real-time conversation enhancement. They can do this because they're able to combine multiple different microphone polar patterns. Now, if you don't know what a polar pattern is, basically it's the direction of which a hearing aid microphone will pick up sound from. And because you have multiple microphones on each of your hearing aids, you can kind of narrow or widen the pickup range of these particular hearing aids. Now, when you combine multiple different polar patterns together, like the anti-cardioid, a cardioid, or omnidirectional polar pattern, you're going to be narrowing the direction that you're picking up sound from. Now, when processing the sounds from these different microphone inputs, the dual processors will determine whether or not that information coming in is speech or whether it's noise. They call this split processing. So if sound coming directly into the front of the hearing aids through the first snapshot is speech, what the hearing aids are gonna do is they're, they're gonna amplify that speech and reduce the amount of digital noise reduction that's happening. However, if it is determined that that input is primarily noise, it is going to be more aggressive with the digital noise reduction as well as the wide dynamic range compression. All right, so in layman's terms, what this means is that the hearing aid is going to be able to identify what is speech and what is noise. And if it's speech, it's going to increase it. And if it's noise, it's going to decrease it. And it is going to be very selective. So if you happen to be standing in front of me and then you shift 
shift over to my right hand side. The hearing aid microphones are basically going to follow you and your speech so I can continue to hear you. But then when you walk over here, potentially noise fills in where you were standing in front of me and the hearing aid is going to be able to identify that too and reduce the noise. Let me show you a clip from a video that Signia put out explaining how this technology works. I have eight loudspeakers recreating the sound of a noisy restaurant. My two lovely colleagues, Erin and Homer Yoon, will be joining me today. Lastly, we have a tablet connected to the Signia Integrated Experience Hearing Aids with a custom app to show visually what the hearing aids are doing live. Okay, let's run it. Right now, you are listening to the sound of a hearing aid with traditional processing. As you can hear, my speech is almost drawn out by the background noise. So now, Barindo, let's switch to Signia Integrated Experience Processing. And if I start talking here, you can see that the hearing aid immediately picks up my location and enhances my voice so you hear me clearly above the noise. Yep, and now it immediately picks up my location to enhance my voice too. But people aren't always standing still. So you can see that even when I move, it stays locked on me and keeps my voice clear. And it even picks me up when I talk from behind. And it can track multiple speakers who are talking, talking at the, at the same, same time. Thanks, guys. But it's not just conversation partners who sometimes move. We also naturally turn our heads during conversations. Let's switch to another mode in the app to demonstrate how Signia Integrated Experience handles this. As you'll see when Homayun turns the head, the hearing aids recognize that the direction of my speech is changing and they stay locked onto my voice, ensuring it stays clear. Okay, um, let's talk about how it works. Sure. Real-time conversation enhancement technology is constantly analyzing up to 192,000 data points per second, detecting speech from one or more talkers, mapping its direction and the conversation dynamics. It then enhances each individual speaker, updated a thousand times a second, so you never miss out. That's right. And all of this happens in partnership with our unique dual processor technology, Augmented Focus. This helps ensure that speech is prominent while making the environment feel dynamic and immersive. All right, so now that you have hopefully a decent understanding of what's actually happening with these hearing aids, how do I feel that they actually work in a background noise environment? Honestly, I have to say that it's impressive and I definitely feel like it's better than the previous generation AX technology. The thing that I like most about it is that I felt like these hearing aids could switch back and forth very quickly when I had different people talking to me. However, I still ran into the same problem, which is if two people are talking to me at the same time, I can't understand what either one of them are saying. I need one of them to stop talking and then I'm okay. Apparently my perception of how these devices worked was echoed in a white paper that Signia is putting out that showed that 95% of individuals experiencing this technology did better in complex speech testing. This white paper ultimately indicated that this form of processing with multiple directional microphone snapshots resulted in a small but meaningful improvement in speech understanding while in a background noise situation. So what does this mean for for you. Well, it means that Signia has improved upon the previous generation AX technology with this newer generation IX technology. Is it enough for you to actually go and upgrade from an AX to an IX? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, if you're the type of person who's looking for every last little bit of benefit out of a hearing aid, I would say go ahead and upgrade. If you're the type of person who's like, no Cliff, I want massive change in technology between one generation to another, this is probably not the generation for you. Now, I've reviewed a lot of different Signia devices over the years, and I have to say that this iX platform is clearly my favorite. That being said, your ability to hear your best with these hearing aids depends on a couple of different variables. Number one, you have to make sure that they are coupled correctly to your ears. That means that you have to make sure you're using the right type of dome or custom ear mold. If you end up just 
getting them fit with any old rubber dome, there's a chance that you might not receive the full amount of benefit with these hearing aids. And on top of that, probably even more important than that, actually it's just as important because it requires the proper dome or custom ear mold, is to make sure that you are hitting your full prescription. What do I mean by full prescription? Well, everybody has a hearing loss prescription that their hearing aids need to be programmed to, and you need to verify that you're actually meeting that full prescription. How do you do this? Well, you use real ear measurement like I mentioned a minute ago. If not, you will not receive the full amount of benefit from these hearing aids, and there is a very solid chance that you will be wasting a significant amount of money and time, which honestly is the exact same for pretty much any hearing aid that you could ever purchase. But assuming that you have an excellent hearing care professional, who follows comprehensive best practices, including real ear measurements, the Signia iX hearing aids might be the best hearing aids that you ever wear. 